Hey YouTube, my name is Zach and I'm the creator of Cassandra Moore and today I'm going to be doing part 2 in this series of tutorials explaining how to create your own programming language. In the last tutorial we covered everything from where to start with your language to a simple intro lesson into EBNF form. Today we're going to finish the intro lesson into EBNF form and define the syntax of our language that we're going to be using to code the compiler. So let's get started. First off, open up a new notepad document. Now, I don't have a screen recorder, so I'm going to be relying on screenshots. Okay, so, before you can define the syntax of your language, you need to know some common terminals that uh, you're going to be seeing when defining the syntax of your language, and those are these. Now, the STMT stands for statement, and everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, identity, expression, arithmet arithmetic expression, um, there are others, but uh, they're either custom, you know, made up, or they're not used as frequently as these are, so uh, we won't have to worry about them that much. Okay, so we want the user, first off, to be able to declare a variable, give that variable an identity, and then give that identity an expression. So uh, we do that by doing this. Now the colon then the equals means that it's part of the EBNF form and not the programming language. Okay, next we need to give it a non-terminal. Now non-terminals can be thought of as kind of hooks. Basically when the compiler the compiler looks for the non-terminals and once it finds one it takes the code with it and puts that into the D .dll or .exe file. Okay, so I'm going to give this the non-terminal var. Now you can give it pretty much anything you want. It could be integer, uh, you know, int, char, string, um, anything, because that's ultimately going to be what the user types in to declare a variable in your programming language. But I'm just going to make um, this one var. Next, I want to give it an identity, so I'm going to give it the terminal identity, and then after that I want the identity to equal an expression. And there's our first uh, little bit of syntax. So let's go ahead and enter, and uh, let's do this. Now, this doesn't really make any sense because we just declared it in the last line. But um, this will in another tutorial coming up when we're coding the compiler. Okay, so let's do a simple for statement, or for loop. Okay, so this is what it looks like, and this is what it does. Um, using the syntax that we just defined, it uh, says for x, the variable x, equals 0 until 10 try and then the statement which will be print hello world and then end to signify the end of the for loop and that um, basically would, would just print hello world ten times okay so after that we need to allow our programming language or our compiler to read a user's input so we do that by typing this now again this is you know my choice it could be read it could be uh, input, it could be anything, um, as long as it has the identity tag after it. And uh, actually, the uh, second identity equals expression um, on the second line is coming into use right here because it's not actually reading the identity, it's reading the identity's expression. Okay, after that, we want our programming language, we want our compiler to be able to print something out on the screen. And we do that with, well, print. Okay, and we're going to want to print an expression. Okay, so after that, we want to simplify it a little bit, um, make it easier to code the compiler, and we do that by separating the statements with semicolons. That way, it's easier to read for the compiler. And we just uh, do that like so. Okay, so that's about half of the syntax of the language that we're going to be using to code the compiler right there. But now we need to define expression, and this is what an expression will look like. Um, it can be a string, it can be an integer, it can be an arithmetic expression, or it can be an identity. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, we've covered uh, pretty much all bases with this, but we need to put some math into our programming language. So we're going to um, go ahead and enter and output this, bin expression. Basically, that is uh, something made up. It's custom uh, terminal. So uh, we want that to equal an expression, bin op, and then another expression. So we need bin op to equal plus, minus, times, or divide. And there you go. 
Um, so we've put some math into it, so now we could add, subtract, time, multiply, or divide um, integers in our language. But now we need to define what an identity is. So an identity is basically a character, and then we're going to uh, go ahead and declare this other tag here, identity rest, and the asterisk just means zero or more times, as said in the last tutorial. So identity rest will make that equal a character or a digit. Okay, so now we need to define what an integer is. Well, an integer is a digit, and the plus sign by the digit tag just means that it is one or more times. It has to be one or more times. And a digit, well, a digit equals any number from 0 to 9. And that would make any number, you know, you can think of. Um, next, we need to define a string. And a string is basically, well, we're going to make it be declared within the quotation marks. And again, the asterisk just means 0 more times. And the string a limb thing, the string a limb tag, is pretty much any other character than the quotation mark and that's so that our programming language and our compiler you know doesn't get confused okay so there you go we've just declared the syntax for our language so now we can start building our compiler well not quite you see we need to have a deep understanding of what a compiler is and how a compiler works before we can make our compiler so Here's an example of a compiler. As you can see, it has four parts, the scanner, the parser, the AST, and the code generator. And they all work in concert to produce the .dll or .exe result. And each part has its own job, which contributes to the next part, which eventually contributes to the .dll or .exe result. And it starts with the scanner, and the scanner is pretty much on the front lines. It takes all of the source code that you type in in the text editor or code editor of your choice, and takes most of it away. It throws most of it out. It throws all the non-terminals that we declared in the EBNF form, the equal signs, the plus, minus, times, divide signs, quotation marks, semicolons, parentheses, throws all of that out, takes all the other stuff, and sends it onto the parser. And then the parser takes all of that and chunks it into what are called tokens. Those tokens then pass on to the AST. The AST combines those tokens with some of the compiler's code. Then that moves on to the code generator where it gets transformed into binary code, basically zeros and ones. And then those zeros and ones gets transformed into the .dll or .exe result. And that's pretty much what a compiler does and how it works. So, um, in the next tutorial, we can pretty well get started with coding our compiler. And we will be using Microsoft's Visual C Sharp to do so. If you don't have it already installed and you're following along with these tutorials, uh, you can get it at www.microsoft.com slash express or msdn.com slash express. And both of those links should be in the description. And uh, we'll see you in the next tutorial.